Hello everybody, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com coming to you with your weekend wrap-up from the February 6th session that you can use for Monday. Overall, Friday was a very bullish session. There is no doubt about it. The only slight problem is, I believe here, just offhand looking at this chart, the S&P 500 looks off the volume here in the middle by about 1% to 2%, and the NASDAQ looks like it's off like around 4 to 5% here. So the only bad news about today's very strong move, actually there's two bad news is, but I don't have the yeah I don't have the IBD charts so I can bring up quickly because it takes Internet Explorer forever to load on any computer. Good job Microsoft. And then uh, Investors Business Daily is a wacky website on how it works. So anyway, we'll just I'm just gonna let you know the IBD 100 and IBD 8585. I believe offhand neither one were up one percent today if they were i do apologize but even if they were the bottom line is the nasdaq was up 2.94 percent almost three percent and the new york stock exchange was up 2.8 percent almost three percent and let me go ahead and go i accidentally messed up let's go to the sp 500 you can see that that one was up 2.69 percent 2.7 basically up almost three percent and the dow jones industrial average up 2.7 percent and then it starts to diverge here with the S&P 600. Boom, 3.6%. Very nice. And then what does the Russell 2000 do? 3.4%. So it was very odd to see the IBD 185.85 of leading top stocks that actually have been leading for the first time since the August to October 2007 rally when we were long stocks like DRYS. Actually, let me... Oh, no, I can't. I don't have the book with me, right? Does that go back there? I wish it did. No, it doesn't. But anyway, it had stocks like DRYS and FSLR when it made 220% gain. DRYS 100% gain in two months. That was the last rally where the top leading industries and leading stocks worked. Now, right now, the recent rally we're seeing... It's actually working. Gold, medical biotech, medical genetics. Let's see, education. Come on, mind. Software, medical, medical ethical drugs. I think security stocks are also with education and the, those general industries of, I think it's like consumer or whatever. Utility stocks, I know, like energy, gas, and electricity. Transportation airlines, and I think even, I'm not sure, think, 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 oh, whatever. I know food stocks have been doing well now, and small banks are stinking up now, so that's kind of changed. But I know gold's at the top, and so that means you got to watch for some gold stocks. And the gold index is XGLD, and you can see how that's acting. The 50-day moving average is almost above the 200-day moving uh, average. And with the prices above both the 50 and 200-day moving average, this will be considered a golden cross. It's bullish. And if you guys use like moves over the 50-day moving average originally to take your first long, <clears throat> a move over the 50-day, the 200-day moving average in December, second long, you bought with the bounce off the January. Like I'm going to pinpoint these points out. So here you went long. You went long here also in November, then sold in December. You bought more here in 2000, 200-day moving average. Then you had to cut your loss, but then you could buy it back. Then it broke out again, and then you could buy more. Then you could even buy more here, and then if you wanted to, really, I guess you could buy on any pullback. But when the 50 crossed above the 200, you would then technically buy more, and then you'd write it out. And the same would go also right now for silver. Wow, silver's got green bop. That is awesome. Silver has green bop. This chart is very, very nice. So silver retook the 50-day moving average on a very strong day here. It's now up 22% since then. Very bullish now with this green bop. And I would take some here with it going green already. And then the next time it gets over the 200, you take some. If it fails, cut the loss. Makes it back over 200, you buy more. Another one is platinum. Continue to watch platinum. The move off the 50 is still working and that move is still around 12%. Not as much as gold and silver, but gold and silver has been just really, they look fantastic. And like I said, I can't find any low of day closes. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But I don't even think, I mean, I just don't, yeah, where is it?
Yeah, I don't even think there's been a low of the day close since May to August. So, like, or June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. It looks like to me there hasn't been a single day where it's closed at its low of the day. And that's huge. And silver, I don't think it's the same thing, but let's see on the way down. 15, 29, it's different. It's a tighter, closer stock, so it easily could. But even still there... No low, low of day. There it is. There's a low of day close. Now let's see if gold did that day. No, once again, it didn't. So it just shows that there's something about gold. Anytime it pulls back, it's being accumulated. So it's much better than the market, but it's very bullish to see the New York Stock Exchange first have what we would consider a refollow through day. From the November lows, we had a fall through day. The market fell apart in January. And with this big down day here, the market was officially re-put back into a negative trend. Now, I did that back here already. I did that earlier on the 14th. IBD did on the 20th. Since then, we had a rally, a move up. And then today, I would, or th I would consider it yesterday. I don't think I mentioned it was a fall through day. Because look at the New York Stock Exchange. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at the S&P 500. Look at the percent gain. And then look at the NASDAQ and look at the percent gain. 2.06. So at least all everyone was up 1.5%. And as you can see right here, let's get close. Volume was quite heavy. And then the good news is, is for people that want to be bears right now, including me, I'd like to be bears. But still, there are no max green bop charts with huge accumulation and great price, price patterns out there. And Hopefully, if we continue to go up, they will get made. But I just want to remind you, in the 2002 bottom, they were already being made. So there was already a flag that maybe it was warning. But I think even back then, I was so focused on the general market that time that I didn't even realize those nice charts were beginning to set up. Once they broke out, I realized, uh-oh, I told too many people the market was going to fall apart. Now I don't see the same kind of stocks I saw near the 2002 low. So I'm just going to be a little cautious. However... After the fall through day um, on the 5th, on Thursday, to have the strong day the day after that where the market closes near the high of the day on the NASDAQ and high of the day near, near on the New York Stock Exchange and on the S&P 500, as you can see, and on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, there's just no doubt to say that it was a bullish session overall. And even on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, volume was higher. But still, I want you guys to notice, compare the volume now to November, October, and September. Still isn't something that says, oh, man, we've definitely bottomed. Still doesn't look that way. Now, before we get out of here, let's see how much time we have left. Okay, cool. Now, we saw some commodities. Let's look at oil. Oil stuck in that range, and let's see. 40, 40, 41, 45, 40, 36. It was 40 then. So 40 there. So let's see. Just wanted to just play it out backwards. I like to do that sometimes personally. So two points. Oh, there you go. So from December 29th to February 6th, oil's moved 0.02%. That's pretty good for the average American, but that's not good, though, because we're not making extra income to go ahead and make up for it. So it would be nice if we were making income. But whatever. So we've looked at platinum. Okay. A-OK. -okay. Let's look at the CR um, Commodity Research Bureau Index. Doesn't look as good, does it, as platinum. Doesn't look as good, does it, as silver. Especially with that green bop over there. I really like that. Doesn't nearly look as good as gold, does it? That's because these hard metals are leading the soft metals. I don't know. Let's see if there's lean hogs in here. Lean hogs. Nope, no items on the list, so they don't have that. They only have the hard metals, but, you know, let's see. The yen, I, I oh, they don't, oh, I wish, oh, the FXE, maybe? Like, look at how bad, like, the euro's doing. Euro's not doing well, but I believe it's FXY, you know, the Japanese yen trust. Starting to roll over now, but it was looking strong. And then, of course, there's, like, the ultra-short 20-year treasury. That's quite a bullish little chart there and everything, so... Things aren't looking horrible everywhere. And here's the United States dollar. Still holding that 50-day moving average. Still having those mini tails at the end there. Not quite sure why everybody's still so bearish. Get bearish once it rolls over. Had you gone long on July and you had 50 to 1 margin, 50 times 16 is what? Duh. Like I know 150%. So it's pretty good. And then let's go ahead and go to like. Gold, just to see how much, or not gold. Uh, let's 
Yeah, let's use gold. Let, no, silver, because silver, I just, I like using silver right now. Silver, 50 to 1, already got 100% in a little over one month and less than a half. So overall, these hard metals, I'm telling you, they look excellent. That's why I'm focus on, focusing on them more than the stock market chart. So even though the indexes look good, the volume and the accumulation and the roundness of a chart doesn't look nearly as good as the metals. Now I'm going to come back with part two for the longs, part three for the shorts for my subscribers, and we'll even look at the Chinese stock market. Not the Hang Seng, but the Shanghai SE Composite. Aloha.